Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. It's me, Tenzing, the guy who made this movie. Uh, welcome to the director's commentary of my film. I've never made a director's commentary before, so I don't really know what I'm supposed to be doing. But uh, I've done commentary before, mostly for video games. But uh, I know this movie better than any video game, so I think I'll be able to do this just fine. Anyways, here's the very first scene in the movie, which is also the very first scene we filmed. This is, we went by the river and we were actually looking for rocks because we're going to be painting chess pieces onto the rocks that we're going to be putting on a, it looks like a chessboard, but it's in the middle of a plaza, and uh, that's what we were going to get the rocks for. So this shot of me walking across the rocks, it might seem really long now, but this is only like half of it. In the original version of the movie, it was way longer. And uh, I'm glad I cut it down, because even I was starting to get bored. In this next shot, I'm actually supposed to be crossing the river, which is obvious, but... A funny thing that happens... While I got to this rock here, you can see me stop, and that's actually because I forgot how to get to the other side. So I just had to edit that down real quickly. You see it right there. Anyway, here's my first monologue. The time is like a river. Its flow is always the same, and it doesn't go back. You know, I, I really did read that somewhere. Uh, I don't know where. I think it was online somewhere. You know, those motivational quotes. After waiting for a long time, I thought to myself, maybe there is a way to reverse the river's flow. Maybe I can still fix the future that I've created. Just maybe. That there is my uh, Dr. Seuss reference for you. I think I think the narrator of How, to, How the Grinch Stole Christmas says that at some point. I, I don't know. Anyway, I wrote that monologue to be as stupid as possible, but make it sound deep. And also look at the effects here. I made the river go backwards. That's pretty cool, in my personal opinion. It took me like 10 minutes to do. Anyway, I showed my mom this first draft, and she said it sounded deep. And that's that's a direct quote. It sounds deep. And uh, that's not what that's what I intended, but really, if you listen to what I'm saying, it does sound kind of stupid. Anyway, here's my second monologue. This is, of course, the monologue where I talk about being a hitman, where it is revealed later that I'm actually just a bug killer. Editing here, it was very important that I got the exact timing right. And here, I'll just let you all watch. Eye contact. And when I can prevent that, all I have to do is pray that they don't get up. Hey, excuse me, I'm from the Committee of Advocates for Ancient Ant Civilization. Uh, if you took the time to spell out that acronym, or you just looked at the letters on the paper, you'll see the... It's a very mature joke, I know, I know. Any anyway, you might notice this part is dubbed. This is probably the best dubbing of the whole movie. It took a very long time to uh, accomplish. There's the paper. It took, a l took about 15 minutes to make that. Very expensive prop design. And here you can hear a train in the background. That was a complete coincidence. We didn't know that train was going to be there. And uh, it also establishes the train that happens later. Uh, but we'll get to that in a minute. Now we're on to the backyard scene. Another complete coincidence that happened during filming, I swear half of this film was just luck that any anything happened at all. Uh, this paper here, the wind that blew that away, that was a complete coincidence that it happened at that exact time. I'm, I'm very happy with the wind, how that happened. Anyway, here's my mom. You said you would be here between 2 and 4 and it's 4.05. I, I got caught up with an animal activist back at the park. You know how they are. Uh, I'm assuming you're Ellen? Yes. Yeah, hi. I'm Carlos from the Ant Control. Uh, okay. Also bugs. You can also spell out that acronym if you really wanted to, but uh, uh, trust me, it doesn't mean anything. It doesn't actually mean anything. You can actually see a kid here in the background. Right there, just for a split second. I didn't see that while editing, so that made it into the final film. But it's fine. Oh. That there was my favorite line for Carlos for the entire film. You know, it's just, oh, it's so simple. It's, it's genius, and uh, I'm probably going to put it on a t-shirt someday, and nobody's going to get it. But I definitely, it definitely stems from this film exclusively. Uh, another thing I'd like to point out is these effects here. No, I didn't actually spray the camera with water. Look at this. Hmm, <clears throat> isn't that nice? I had to find a green screen video of water, and I think this is the first time I've actually used green screen to make one of my movies. I know the technology is fantastic. Anyway, we're here in the act two of the film, and it's snowing. Wow. Now 
you might notice that when Aska did this part, she didn't drop the paper. That's because Presley, being the animal activist and environmentalist that she is, wouldn't dare to waste paper, and she's actually gonna, if you watch later in the movie, when she shows up again, she still has that paper, and she's still in the same plaza, trying to get rid of that same paper. Also, look at these ants. I had to draw that. It was horrifying. This scene, by far the funniest, the funniest scene in the film. I'll just let it play out. Hey. Huh? What? You want some hot chocolate? Yeah, I, I do want some hot chocolate. I, actually, I was feeling a little. I was feeling kind of warm, like like hypothermic. But I'll should I'll have been here on time. Yeah. So yeah, that's that. Um, I, jo I I I mentioned in the film that I was developing hypothermia, but seriously, I was out there for quite a while in that snow. We we were filming it for for quite a few minutes. Anyway, here's here's the scene where I get bonked in the head with a stick. Look at this editing. It looks so real, didn't it? And now we have some fantastic music from Owen Page. I'll just let this scene play out as well. I was just doing my job. I would also like to apologize to my mother for making her character so rude and mean. I, I would like to clarify that she's not like that at all in real life, mostly because she told me to uh, clarify that. Hey, look, we're all really mean characters in this movie, Mom. It it's not just you. We got some epic fight choreography. This was actually very painful to do in the cold. If your hands are cold and you get hit by a stick or a broom, uh, res to, be, to be fair, it it'll hurt a lot more than regularly. But hopefully it looked cool enough to justify that. Ah yes, the train scene. <sighs> this scene... We waited for two hours in the snow here. And the second we went back to the house, we started walking back, we almost made it to the house, and we hear the train horn. So we start sprinting back, we're frozen already, and we make it just in time to get the shot of the train going around the curve there. I was very proud of myself. The rest of this we filmed beforehand, and there is my reference to Monty Python. You know, it's just the same distance away. But yeah, we had to t two hours waiting for a train. Just for these three shots here. But hopefully, hopefully it was worth it. Hopefully it looks like we had a big budget for this movie. We, ha we hired a train, you know, to come at a certain time. And I, I rather like how it turned out. Goes very well with the music that uh, Owen made. Also, again, really want to thank Owen for making the, mu the music for this movie. Uh, it really helps getting the mood down for each scene. And speaking of mood and scene, welcome to the sad scene. If you haven't seen the movie already, you've seen the movie already. That's why you're watching the director's commentary now. Um, if you didn't cry the first time watching this, you're going to cry now because you're watching it again. And the more you watch the scene, the higher chance you'll cry. Editing this scene, I had to watch it over and over again before I got all the tweaks right. And, uh, l let's just say my tear ducts aren't very, uh, uh, I actually don't know what happens to tear ducts. A a anyway, I cried a lot. I was very sad, very emotionally invested. And, uh, you see there, I'm hungry. I collapse in the snow. And look at that. I made contact with the snow with my bare hand. Do you know how much that hurt afterward? <sighs> so you might have seen my the, the plate of food there cooked by my mom. Thanks, mom, for, for the food. I didn't want to use stock footage. So for this, I wanted to make the illusion that the, the clothes were being dragged. So to do so, we dragged the clothes. And then you see River in the background here. Very realistic. She's in the background of almost every scene. So props to my sister for making that prob. It actually hurt quite a bit to get hit in the face uh, while laying down in the snow. You might notice I'm wearing gloves in this shot, and I'm wearing different gloves in the next shot, where I was wearing no gloves in the shot before. Little guy, honestly my favorite character. I was laying on a sled there just so I didn't freeze to death. Animated in Pencil 2D. And this shot, or he just dies. The dubbing here. Okay, I'm gonna just let it play out. Look, I, why? Don't make me cry. Look, I don't die. Why? <laughs> and then rather unceremoniously, little guy is just placed in my back pocket. 
And that's it. I want to distract the balance between being dramatic at all and just kind of stupid with the dubbing sound. Well, not stupid. International, uh, you see. Usually dubs aren't that good, but I didn't want to make a good dub. I wanted to make a mediocre dub. And I think I succeeded in doing that. Anyway, here we are back at the first scene. Uh, if you're smart at all, you'll realize that we've made it back to the beginning, and now the story is going to progress from the present to the end, or something like that. I don't know. The ending of this scene was actually the ending of the first scene, but then I cut it out and put it at the end of the little guy scene, uh, just, to, just to make it more obvious where we are in terms of the timeline of the story. Originally, I intended to make a movie that was completely backwards, so it would end with the ending scene, and then go back to a part of the scene before that, and then back to the... It was a very stupid timeline, and I realized that stories are told in a certain direction, because that's the uh, smart way to do it, the way that works. So, we're back in order, and we're back at the plaza. Oh, hey, would you like... Oh. You. This is more top tier comedy. You know, most of these lines were made up while we were shooting it. I wish I could have actually made a script because I'm sure I could have made the movie a lot more uh, filled with jokes. Here I am just pulling little guy out of the pocket. And you can see these rocks and the checkerboard in the background. That's actually the chess rocks that we made after we went to the rocks uh, to get to the, uh, the river in the beginning. Anyway, Ice can pull that broom out of nowhere. And from here, I make one last sad joke, and then Rivers in the background again, and we transition to the last scene. You might notice the little guy in the back of the broom. Most people don't, even though it's right in shot. Hey, Carlos. How's the ant killing going? They're dying. Who well, are they now? So Bob uh, is actually my mom again, playing two parts in this movie, really carrying the film, uh, really swearing into the mic here. That's why I had to bleep it out. And just like that. That's the end of my movie. So yeah, this uh, this director's commentary took less time than I thought it would. I was gonna say a lot more, but I, I guess I didn't have time to. Maybe now would be the time to do that since the credits are kind of kind of slow. Anyways, this was, a, this was a fun movie to make. I haven't made a proper you know film uh, in a while. You, you might say I've, I've never made a proper film. This is the closest I've come to that. So. Thanks to my sister and my mom and Owen Page for helping with the movie on your respective parts of helping. Yeah, this was a fun movie to make again. I'll say it again and again. And maybe, just someday, I'll make a more serious movie. And I'll get millions of dollars and it'll be awesome. Uh, anyways, for now we got one last joke in here. Pablo Estrella. As a little guy. Don't be, don't worry, Pablo Estrella is not a real person. It was a joke. I made it up. I'm sorry if anybody believed that it was a real person. And that's all the time I have for the director's commentary. So, uh, I hope you guys enjoyed the film. I hope you guys enjoyed the director's commentary. So, yeah. I'll see you in the next TR Studios production. Bye, guys. Oh, we actually have a special guest for the for the movie. Here, here she is. What, Skyland, what do you think of the movie? Good. Awesome. Well, thanks for being on the show, Skyland. See you next time. See you next time.